I'm Ali Voltus, and today I'm going to tell you about five problems with American democracy that I've found. So, let's get right into this. Number one, unclear reserved powers. Now, according to the 10th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, the states have any power that the federal government does not have. In other words, the states should, in theory, be able to do anything that the federal government is not doing. However, the problem with this is that the U.S. Constitution also has something called the Elastic Clause, which allows the federal government, uh, depending on your interpretation of it, a wide range of additional powers. Now, these two mean, these two together mean that there is an unclear limit to both the power of the federal government and the power of the state governments, which means that ultimately there is a possibility that they will overlap. And because of this, you end up with the current system where you have the federal government getting involved with a large number of issues that in theory many would argue they shouldn't be involved in such as education housing and urban development uh, health care and and such things that people would have said that perhaps originally may have been more in the domain of the states and something that would be reserved for them to act upon however as the system has developed and as interpretations of the constitution have developed and as the actual implementation of our laws has developed, the federal government now is involved with pretty much every aspect of the lives of its citizens, and therefore it is very unclear what the reserve powers are. And you might say, how is this a problem with American democracy? Well, it's because it leads into the second point. Number two, insubordination. And what do I mean by insubordination? What I mean by this is that ideally, when there is a division of powers between the federal government and the state government, if you have a particular problem, you ask yourself which level of government is supposed to deal with this problem, and then you go to that level of government, and either the problem is fixed or perhaps it's not fixed and you might put in a formal complaint and do some activism or you might move to a different state if it was a, a state level problem. Now, the way this currently is, because of the great overlap in activity between the federal government and the state governments, what many people do is if they can't achieve something on the state level, they lobby for politicians on the federal level to fix their problems by taking away the power that their state governments have and apportioning that to the federal government in order to override whatever the state governments do. And this ultimately destroys the reason for having states in the first place. It also destroys the integrity of the very foundation of the federal system, which is this idea of multiple states obviously having different individual interests, but coming together for very specific common interests in order to maintain a country. But because of this insubordination of citizens being able to supplant the power of their states by going above the heads of their state governments, it actually undermines the system that the Founding Fathers were attempting to create. This, of course, leads me to point number three, centralization. Because of citizens choosing to vote on the federal level against the interests of, let's say, their neighbors on the local level, it creates a system where more power is centralized and where local representation becomes less important as time passes. And because of a decreasing importance of local representation, or not necessarily the importance, but the power of local representation, 
it ultimately undermines the ability of people with local problems to solve those problems locally and requires more one-size-fits-all solutions to problems which end up hurting a lot more people than they help. And this, of course, is expanded by point number four. Because of the centralization that has occurred, we now realize that money buys power. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you are becoming more centralized in a democracy, what that means is that it expands the base of voters that you have to appeal to in order to get things done. Now, in order to do that, the larger the base of voters that you need in order to win an election requires you to reach more people. And how do you reach more people? Well, if you were, let's say, in a local election, you would be able to go and uh, talk to your neighbors, talk to leaders in the community, and in that way, you could easily build up support. But as things become more centralized, as the system grows in, in that way, you end up having a situation where you need campaign funds. And obviously, there are some people who would be very happy to give you campaign funds in exchange for power or influence and, uh, and other favors, perhaps. Now, the problem with this is that the system of American democracy has essentially created a situation where this has become necessary because otherwise you don't have the funds in order to run a major campaign. And therefore, what democracy was originally intended for, which is to give everyone an equal vote in, in the electorate, has actually ended up bringing about a situation where an oligarchy develops, where more powerful people, people with more money, have more influence because they have a greater potential for campaign contributions. Now, the reason why we don't have a method to fix this in the current system is because of point number five, the rigid structure of our current system. What do I mean by that? Well, if we chose to instead of centralizing and bringing more power to the central government, instead of doing that, if we decided to divide power up locally, in theory, it would be a lot more difficult for a lot of these wealthy people to buy power because it's easier for politicians who are getting elected to talk to the local people. And therefore, they don't need as much money to get ahead in politics, which means that it's a lot easier for people to move ahead without people buying those influences. Now, the problem with this, the problem that we have is that our current system is not set up to support this kind of movement. And what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, it used to be that excessive trends towards centralization were stopped by the fact that the Senate was elected by the state governments. However, a constitutional amendment came around, which now means that the Senate is also popularly elected, which means it suffers from the same problems that the House of Representatives suffers in this issue. And you might say, well, why don't we get more representatives in the House of Representatives? Maybe that'll help. But the problem is that the U.S. government, although it has the capability to add more representatives to the House of Representatives, has chosen not to for quite some time, which means that as the population increases, as it, as it indeed does, you end up having the representatives being less representative of the governments uh, that they represent. And, and, and what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is, let's say you look at Oklahoma. Oklahoma today has a greater population 
than the entirety of the United States did in 1790 when the first census occurred during the presidency of George Washington uh, at the time of the first United States Congress. Now, what's interesting about Oklahoma is that Oklahoma has a U.S. House delegation of four representatives and, of course, a delegation to the Senate of two senators, as every state does. Now, what's interesting is that in the first Congress of the United States, uh, of course, after the implementation of the Constitution, uh, by the end of the first Congress, you had 26 people in, in the Senate, 26 senators, and uh, 64 representatives. Now, what's, what's interesting is that now we're looking at Oklahoma today, we have two senators and five representatives representing a population that at the founding of our country would have been represented by 26 senators. Now, of course, for different states issues, that's not as important as the representatives. 64 representatives as opposed to five representatives. That's more than 10 times the people being represented by a single representative, which means that in Oklahoma today, the representatives are less, uh, 10 times less representative of their populations in their districts than they were when the United States was founded. And, and of course, Oklahoma wasn't represented then, but I'm just using Oklahoma as an example because it has a similar population. So what do you do about this? Well, what you have to do to fix this is you have to establish a system that dynamically responds to both horizontal and vertical stresses. Because if you added simply more representatives, you'd have too many people in the House of Representatives and you wouldn't get anything done, which is the reason why they didn't add more, uh, to, to be fair. So what you have to do is you have to be able to split horizontally. If a state gets to a certain population, it should be able to split into two states in order for uh, people to have more specific representation in their areas. And also, you need to not be rigid vertically and be able to split vertically. In other words, if the country's population gets big enough, and if there's enough states, you should automatically reach a point where an additional level of government is created in between in order to ensure that everything functions correctly. Now, in order to prevent abuses of this happening and corruption, you would also have to ensure that the exact powers of the various levels of government are clearly defined constitutionally and that people can't simply vote at the top in order to get rid of things that are happening somewhere in between. So that's my solution to the issue. I've already talked it in uh, other videos. It's a system I like to call coinanism, but uh, maybe that's for another time. Anyway, tell me what you think. Do you agree that these things are problems in American democracy? Do you think that these things are solved in the way that I'd like to solve them? Would you solve them in a different way? Are they even problems at all? Do you think that maybe it's okay that we have these issues? Or do you think that perhaps there's a something that I've overlooked? So tell me what you think and uh, be, be sure to have plenty of conversations, civil conversations. Remember, always be polite in the comments section below. And thank you all for watching. And I'll be seeing you all next time on the Wiltus Over and Out.